The scariest thing about traveling is the possibility that a destination you've wanted to go to for so long doesn't quite live up to your expectations. Luckily, Bolivia is not one of those places. If you are to choose one country to travel in South America, I think it's going to be Bolivia. We are Marca Nasa, and if you have been following our journey, you will know we have been making our way through the amazing continent of South America. After spending an incredible few days exploring the Atacama Desert in our rental truck, it was time for someone else to take the wheel and get us across the border from Chile to Bolivia to explore one of the countries that we are most excited about before leaving Europe in November. Booking tours isn't usually our style of traveling as we like to be independent and try to do things by ourselves, but this trip was recommended to us too many times to ignore. And it became very obvious very quickly why this trip has to be done as part of a private tour group. But we'll talk about that later in the video. We booked our three day tour in San Pedro 24 hours in advance and a bus picked us up the following morning at our Airbnb at 7 a.m. Our destination three days later would be Uyuni in Bolivia. It's also worth mentioning that a similar tour with a similar itinerary can be booked from Bolivian towns Uyuni and Tupiza. But for us, it made sense to kill two birds with one stone and just take the tour from the Atacama to Uyuni. At the border, we were split into our groups of six and helped our driver haul our heavy luggage onto the roof of our 4x4 that would transport us for the next couple of days. The tour we booked included breakfast, lunch and dinner each day and we were pleasantly surprised with how well presented and tasty our breakfast was at the Bolivian border. This left a good first impression on all of us and we couldn't help but be excited at what lay ahead on the tour. Our bus picked us up at 7 o'clock and then we went through the border and now we are finally in Bolivia and now we are supposed to pay 150 bolivianos bolivian bolivianos that's their currency to enter the massive national park uh, the, the main difference between chile and bolivia that there are no roads at all here but it's pretty cool and straight away we were at our first real attraction of the trip laguna blanco we drove about 30 seconds and arrived at laguna blanco and already it's amazing it's class As always around salt lakes, there were a few flamingos here and there. Laguna Blanco runs into Laguna Verde, but the difference is that Laguna Verde is largely uninhabited due to the toxicity of the water. As our 4x4 made its way through the stunning landscapes, we quickly realized that the roads we would be traveling on for the duration of the three-day tour would more accurately be described as dirt tracks. This made the experience feel much more authentic though, and our driver seemed pretty comfortable. I suppose this is a good time to tell you why this trip is not one you can take on your own. In our previous video about the Atacama Desert, we rented a truck and drove through the desert. Unfortunately, this is just not an option here as you would definitely get lost in the south of Bolivia if you were on your own. You can't even find the tracks we were driving on on Google Maps, so if you are planning on doing this trip without a guide, think again. We believe you are not even permitted to attempt this route alone, and for good reason. After a quick stop at Dali Desert, we arrived at these hot springs for lunch. This is a beautiful setting for a quick dip, but unfortunately our swimming gear was tied up on the roof of our 4x4. Just next to the hot springs, we had a look at some vicuñas and flamingos and enjoyed an impressively prepared lunch in the restaurant. Just like that, we were back on the... Uh, dirt tracks. As we made our way along the bumpy, dusty tracks, the elevation rose and the weather was ever-changing. The weather in the Andes mountain range is unpredictable to say the least, and at one point we were hit by a hail shower which made navigating through the high, deserty landscape quite challenging. We just had to trust that our driver knew what he was doing. Next stop on our day one itinerary was a stop at one of the main attractions of doing a tour like this, Sol de Mañana Gazers. It was quite surreal to witness this amazing area of volcanic activity. Neither of us had ever seen anything like it. A geyser is a rare kind of volcanically charged hot spring that is under pressure and erupts, sending jets of water and steam up to 10 meters into the air and leaving behind this gooey greeny blue gunk in its craters. Definitely a sight we won't forget in a hurry. The last stop before we reached our accommodation was Lake Colorado, a rare red pink colored lake overlooked by active volcanoes and occupied by vast numbers of pink flamingos. What a place! It's just the most ridiculous place ever. Salt flats, some pink water, lots of flamingos and volcanoes around. Unreal. Some first day of a tour, it's gonna be really hard to 
live up to day one on day two and day three, but there's hope and it comes close to this. Altitude in Bolivia is very high, it's Andes, and this lake is located on 4,200 meters, and we were there almost at 5,000 meters. So you might have altitude sickness, especially coming from Atacama, because you don't acclimatize as much as if you're coming from the other way. And here are leaves of a uh, plant called coca, coca leaves. And I'm, I will not say what drug they make from it because I'm not sure if YouTube allows it, but you can guess from the name, coca leaves. So you're supposed to put them here, chew a little bit, don't swallow. And in five, 10 minutes, you spit them out and you don't have altitude sickness. And usually I'm, I'm struggling uh, like with headache and stuff. Last year, when we arrived in Lhasa, had a sore head on her first night and she actually ended up vomiting. But today I was fine. I don't know if I acclimatized all these things helped. After getting fed, watered and well rested in our remotely located accommodation, which was surprisingly adequate considering it was quite literally in the middle of nowhere, we set off the next morning once again. It wasn't long before we arrived at the place that looked more like a traditional desert you might imagine. These golden rock formations dominate the landscape. The shapes of the rocks are often named after what they resemble. For example, this rock is Copa del Mundo, named after football's World Cup trophy for obvious reasons. This one is called Camel Rock. As you can clearly see, it resembles a camel sitting with its legs tucked in. We got our adrenaline fix for the day by doing some rock climbing at this lost city. Getting up was pretty easy, but getting down was a bigger problem for most. If you're planning on coming to this part of South America, llamas are surely one of the animals you just need to see. We enjoyed a blissful walk through this stunning valley, getting an incredible close-up view of this herd of grazing llamas. They're such a rude animal. They're like a mix of sheep, giraffes, uh, camels. The valley itself is created by a golden volcanic rock formation with a dark colored lake in the middle. Day two in Bolivia and we've learned that it's just random as fuck. You can see anything here. Here we are at a big, canyon with volcanic rock everywhere and it's just kind of surreal like yeah, i don't even know what to say about it <laughs> class this uh canyon is called canyon de soras i think it's because if you fall off then you'll have a sore ass sorry i didn't want to say that joke as it made me. <laughs> our last stop on day two was at anaconda canyon Unfortunately, it is not named because of the type of snake you can see there. Instead, it is named Anaconda Canyon because of the shape of the river that runs through it. This place is absolutely stunning, and to get to stand on top of the canyon with just our tour group for company was really special. After sipping a local beer at Julaka Salt Shop, it was time to make our way to our hotel for the night. But this wouldn't just be any average hotel. This is called Salt Hotel, and yes, you guessed it, the whole building is made from and decorated using salt. Even the floor in our bedroom was just salt. We tasted it, you can trust us. There wasn't much time to rest as we set our alarms for 3.30 a.m. Every so often when traveling, you just know that rising early is going to give you the gift of a once in a lifetime experience and your body just doesn't allow you to be tired. This time, the early alarm would allow us to make it to the top of Cactus Island on the Ayuni Salt Flat for a spectacular sunrise. In fact, one of the most spectacular sunrises we have ever seen. The real name for Cactus Island is Ila Inca Huasi, which means House of the Inca. The island is the top of the remains of an ancient volcano, which was submerged when the area was part of a giant prehistoric lake roughly 40,000 years ago. The giant cacti that dominates the island are hundreds of years old and grow at the rate of one centimeter per year. These cactuses, cacti, sorry, are massive. This one is literally like five times taller than a magical sunrise was followed by a serene breakfast back down at the salt flats prepared by our trusty driver, tour guide, photographer and personal chef Delphine, who was amazing for the whole three days and we couldn't recommend him enough.
He drove us deep into the salt flat and assisted us in taking these wacky illusion pictures that were so much fun to shoot. When we were there, it was dry, perfect for taking these funny pictures. However, after it has been raining on the salt flat, you have the possibility of taking stunning photos like this, where the water-covered salt reflects the sky perfectly, creating a picture-perfect moment demonstrated in these pictures by our friends Sophie and Brian, who went a couple of weeks later than us. Whether it's dry or wet when you go, you are sure to really have a unique experience on the biggest salt flat in the world. One thing about hoping for it to rain, however, is that it might end up raining too much, and you might not even be able to make it to Cactus Island or even risk not being able to drive on the salt flat at all. So pick your time to go wisely, as, for example, in February and March, it can become one giant needy puzzle. After having great crack shooting the pictures and videos with our tour group, there was just time for a stop at Train Cemetery and one more tasty lunch before we got dropped off at the bus station. That same night, we caught a night bus that took us all the way to La Paz. If you want to hear about our time in La Paz and how it turned out to be one of our favorite cities in South America, make sure to check out our next video. Llama fetuses hanging from the shop fronts, and the reason for that is... As for this trip though, we couldn't recommend it highly enough. The company we toured with is called Mountain Lips and the three-day, two-night trip cost $200. $30 per person. And if you want to learn how we managed to get $100 discount, check out our previous video about the Atacama Desert. So, we think the price is pretty reasonable considering how much we squeezed in these three days. The quality of each meal was excellent, the size of the group was really small, as well as having an excellent driver as a host, and the whole itinerary just left us in awe of this amazing country. So, as we said earlier, we had really high expectations about Bolivia, and we are just so happy that this three-day tour truly lived up to our expectations and just we were were absolutely amazed about this country. Yep, uh, taking tours generally wouldn't be the way we would try to do traveling, we would try to do stuff as independently as possible, but this is one tour that you should definitely do because it's definitely the best way to do it. So if you follow our advice and take the three-day tour through the south of Bolivia, we are positive you're gonna have something to remember, just like us. <laughs>